The Up and Adam Show is sponsored by the Top Flix app. Discover your next favorite movie and TV series and where to stream it. Explore trending titles, popular trailers, entertainment news, and much more. All in one free app. Download it on the App Store today for free. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Up and Adam Show. My name is Adam Lupus. Thanks for joining me once again on this Sunday night. I'm not sure I'm posting this, so hopefully it's a Sunday, so that just works out well. Uh, I have a very special guest. I had him on the podcast before. Uh, he is Art the Clown in the movie Terrifier. Please welcome David Howard Thornton. David, how's it going? I'm good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. It's so it's so exciting to have you on again. A lot lots yes. happened since our last conversation. And, yeah, uh, it's been yeah, a it's little been, while. <laughs> yeah, what, at least five, six months now, right? Yeah, yeah. Lots yeah, been going on. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you're actually the first guest that gets to see my highlights, actually. I'm oh, bringing, yeah. Bringing the 90s back. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Doing? I got the natural ones. They're called gray hairs. Honestly, <laughs> I, was, I was going for that, though. Mine's like, it's a little bit of that gray, kind of like yeah. grayish blonde, but. Yeah, man. I guess uh, I guess we're we're we're, we're twinning today. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sounds so, good to me. Yeah, man. So, how, how have you been though since our last conversation? I've been good. I, I can't complain too much. You know, it's just like uh, been doing some work and stuff like that. So it's it's nice getting back a little bit in the swing of things. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, you're you're filming. Uh, we 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 actually just mentioned it earlier that you're filming a new movie and you got Terrifier mm-hmm. two coming out. So you got a couple projects on the go. Pretty yeah, exciting, pretty exciting stuff, man. So it's pretty um, exciting. Yeah, man. Um, from our last conversation, I wanted to bring up something because it really kind of stood mm-hmm. out to me. You mentioned that you were a really goofy kid growing up, and yeah. you, you made everybody <laughs> laugh. And and uh, I, I, I kind of related to you about, uh, a lot about that because I was the same way. I was goofy. I, I was I was like the class clown and stuff. And um, I guess it's kind of crazy seeing you doing like horror movies now, right? Like you, went, you went from being goofy to doing horror movies. So like, yeah. I, I guess my, my question to you is that like, I mean, obviously, you know, you mentioned last time that you just kind of fell in love with the whole horror, horror movie and horror genre, but do you ever want to get into kind of like that comedy aspect? I forgot to ask you that last time. Oh my gosh. Yes. I want to totally get back into way more comedy. I mean, I, I like one of my you know, like dreams has been on to be on a sitcom one day. So yeah. man, I would love that. That would be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I know because I, I, cause I don't know why I, I didn't ask you that last time. I'm thinking in my head, wait, he was a goofy guy. Really funny. I'm like in my head. Like, so, so yeah. So why did you get into so the horror genre? You just got into that because I guess you, yeah, you fell in love with the, yeah. that whole thing, but why else was it? Was it something that you were drawn towards? It was just, you know, opportunity. I, I, I've been one, like, you know, anytime there's an opportunity for me to act, I, I jump at it. I don't, it, I mean, I, I had been wanting to get into film for a while too, because I had never done any film work before um, Terrifier besides like extra work. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw that, you know, the role for Art the Clown because they're looking for a tall skinny guy with um, like physical comedy experience or clowning experience. Yeah. And I, I knew the character already from uh, All Hallows Eve. So I was like, oh my God, I, I'd be foolish not to jump at this chance. You know? So that's why I did it. I was like, yeah, why, why not? It might be a good way to get my foot in the door in the film world. Yeah. And, and, and that's why too. And, and the art, the clown, that character, it's a very hard character to play because like, there's no dialogue, right? It's just right. you and all the movement and stuff. And that was something to me that really stood out to me, how you brought that up. And, and that makes you a great actor, by the way. So props to you, because that's Thank hard you. to do. That's hard to scare someone without talking. Every, everyone's yeah. everyone's scared because, you know, the jump scares. That's why I get scared. But <laughs> when I watched the movie, I was I was pretty creeped out, man. I was more creeped out than scared, I'll be honest, which is that's what... <laughs> Cause I'm I, I get scared of clowns and stuff so, yeah. <laughs> or mimes and you know what I mean mimes clowns so it, it's I don't know I I guess to me when it's it's that it goes back to that idea that you know the way you act and you move your body and you do things that's mm-hmm. that that's kind of how you scare people I guess in the movie. <laughs> oh, that's that's you know how the great um, horror legends scared people back in the day you know Lugosi and uh, Karloff and Lon Chaney and all of them it's just they weren't relying on jump scares. Mm-hmm. That I, I think that's where you know horror films have gotten off track is they rely way too much on jump scares to scare people. So it's the cheapest scare you can give in a movie. That's what that's what I've heard. I've heard it's like the easiest. Yeah, it's the cheapest way. It's the easiest way because, and, and it's funny because it's the music that's the jump scare. Mm-hmm. Sometimes pop up if, if there's no sound and it's just a pop up, it's not that scary. Yeah. It's the it's oh. the music. It's the music and they go boom. It's like whoa. 
That's what gets you. Yes, all, all the music and all the sound effects, like you know, like a, a truck going by, going, blah, blah, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just like that's what that's what makes people jump. It's like because I mean, we we have like one or two jump scares in the Terrifier films, and like yeah. when you watch it without the sound effects and everything, it's not scary at all. It's just like, oh, okay. You kind of have to. I, I guess you got you have to kind of implement it no matter what. I guess, but even yeah. like a movie like The Exorcist, I, I I was telling you last time, I didn't find that scary at all, and I guess maybe because it's like so outdated, but. Mm-hmm. It, it's it not outdated. It just, it just, um, well, yeah, in a way, but it, it, it's still a classic in its own right. It just, for me, yeah. when I watched it, I wasn't too, I wasn't too scared. Well, I think also because like, you know, that generation, it was a much more religious generation. Mm-hmm. So that was one of those things that was a real fear that people had, especially at that time was demonic possession. I know like my, I, I come from like a, a, a family where my grandparents on my dad's side were very evangelical Christians. Yeah. And my grandmother firmly believed in demonic possession and all that kind of stuff. She, I'm like, if when I had temper tantrums as a kid, she would say it's because I had demons in me. Real, oh, she wow. even like one time tried to exercise me in a restaurant when I was five years old because I was just being an impatient five year old that wanted to go to the toy store. And yeah. she took it as like, oh, he's got demons inside of him. So she tried to exercise me in the middle of the restaurant. Oh my gosh. And, and that's why I think people, why back then, because now back then, so my, my girlfriend's dad was telling me that he actually had nightmares from that movie. He watched it when he was, he was like six, seven years old, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess going back to how this is your grandmother, you said, right? That was like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that era and that, you know, the people who grew up with that watching that movie, they got scared because they actually firmly believed that it was real. Like that's, this can happen. Right. You know, they were like, oh, right. wow, like that can happen. Now you watch, you go, nah, exorcists are not real. Right. So you think, okay, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a cool concept, but. I think that's why it didn't scare me. But a movie like Terrifier, dude, like that, that can happen. <laughs> it could be a, a, a guy dressed up and yeah. trying to kill you. Like that, that that's what makes yeah. it all. Guy dresses a clown, follows people, you know, into a, a restaurant, and then he follows them into another. I mean, that's very real. That that stuff does happen to people. Absolutely, yeah. Not necessarily someone dressed as a clown, but you know, uh, people do that where they stalk people like that and corner them into in like a building or something like that and kill them. Even even like uh, like movie like Halloween, same concept, right? Like you know, exactly. Michael, Michael Myers. That movie scares me. It's like it's just a guy doesn't talk, and well, with him it's different because I find he has it a little bit easier than you. As in, like he just walks around slow, but you have to actually like. Yeah. It's part. It's, it's, is it really physically draining when you do that movie? Like it, it can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, the, the funny thing is, I never really thought about it until I started doing it. Is like when you have to do multiple takes, just stabbing someone repeatedly. Yeah, your arm starts to hurt after a while. And, uh, we had like one night on Terrifier Two where I was doing it for a while. They decided to give me a break since they didn't need to show my face in the shot, so they let a. Um, one of the crew guys come in and do some stabbing for a little while, oh, just to you know, give me a break. Cause you know, all he saw was the hand. Yeah. And even he was like, Oh my God. How do it, you feel? I'm like, see, it hurts after a while. I, I imagine like you, like, cause it, you probably get someone to care right? You're probably going at it. It's like, okay, cut. And it's like, it's like, David, relax. It's not real. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you do, yeah. It's oh my God, man. But, but speaking of terrifier too, um, so I want to talk a little bit about that, obviously, without giving too much away, because I'm, I'm sure you can't say much, right? But um, you mentioned last time that it's bigger bigger and better than the, la- yes. the first one. And there's more of a plot, you said. There's more of a story, more yes. of a plot. So I guess what can you tell us that, I guess, that the way you're allowed to say, what, what can you say about the movie so far? Well, I, I would like, say like, plot like, wise. Like, like, Yeah, like, like, like besides that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, plot-wise, it's, it's more, it's like, it's, you know how, like, um, the first film was setting up art, just introducing the the world to art yeah like the i would say yeah yeah the, this film is introducing the world to uh this protagonist sienna so it's her story but i mean i'm not saying like art's not front and center he's there most of the film yeah, so don't worry about that he's not like he's just gonna pop in like last 15 minutes of the film he's, mm-hmm. he's front and center but it, it's more focused on her and like developing her relationship with her family, especially, especially her little brother and her mom and, yeah. and, and her friends as well. It's like, it, that's what we're really focusing on. And, and we're trying to, you know, you're seeing how this one girl becomes, you know, a, a, an ass kicker by the end of the film, hopefully if she survives, <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to find out. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, and there's, there's more to it than that. I, I think we're really setting everything up for part three. Oh, really? That, like, that's, that's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's you know it's there's some new elements added into it, some new characters that people are going to be like, who, what the heck, is, or who the heck is this, and you know yeah. that. <laughs> Absolutely, so yeah. It, it's it's fun, and like I would say, you know, we've really expanded on the 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 kill scenes more. I mean, I think that's part of the thing uh, with COVID. Yeah. It, we were upset at first because we were so close to being finished. We had like maybe two more big kill scenes to do. And so that, you know, we're like, oh, we're so, so close to the finish line. But mm. Damien was able to take that, that basically this past year to really flesh out those skills. And he's had time to build more of the prosthetics and he added more to those kill scenes. Like the, the one kill scene I filmed in December uh, took about a week to film. Wow, there's one, so many one elements. Scene, eh? One scene, one scene, it, but there's so many elements to it. So mm. many prosthetics and everything like that. And, and that wasn't originally written like that at all. And we had started filming the first part of the kill before the pandemic happened. And we decided to scrap what we had already filmed mm. because we're like, this is going to be better. Yeah. What we, so I, that's what we did. We just started from the get go and redid it. The, the whole beginning of the kill. I'm like what we had originally started filming would have been good. It, it would have been totally, you know, yeah. good on its own. But I, I think Damien just like, hey, you know, let's just swing for the fences here. And I, I think people are going to tra- probably be traumatized by the skills. <laughs> well, you know, well, it's so it's so funny because, you know, I, I'm the same way. Like, I, I, I look at it that COVID in a way as much as it was bad, it was a shitty thing Mm. that it kind of opened up a lot of doors and opportunities for people. Right. And the fact that you just brought up that for Damien, especially to, to create that new scene and make it better, Mm. I guess in a way, like, I I guess like when something bad happens and it knocks you on your butt, you want to get up and push even harder and go, okay, this happened. I'm going to get, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to do even better. So that, and, and now there's more hype towards the movie. Cause I guess, yeah, I got delayed a bit cause of COVID, but now everyone's thinking like, Oh, like I, I can't wait. Like the anticipation is growing yeah. more and more. I see like everybody talking about it now. A lot of people on Instagram, a lot, a lot of my friends are talking about it. So it's it's an, it's an exciting thing. I'm really excited to watch it. Uh, and man, uh, I I love hearing that. <laughs> yeah, and I know it makes you smile. It makes me smile too because because I, I like that's why I wanted to have you on because it's it's uh it, you know it's nice to see people passionate about things and you're really passionate yeah. about your work and everything and, and, it, and it and it shows. Um, what were some of the challenges you faced though from, so for example, going from terrifier one to terrifier two, have you like learned anything? Have you faced any new challenges or cause I, cause you were, you were playing the same character, yeah. but it's a different movie in, in a different light. So what are you trying to do differently this time? Oh, I, I think our big challenge was, you know, how do we surpass what we did in the first film? That I, I think we're like, God, did we set the bar high on the, the uh, hacksaw scene? <laughs> it's yeah. like, because now like everybody's expecting that level. And we're like, oh, boy, that's uh, that's that that's been the big you know thing for us. It's like, OK, how do we improve on what we had? And I, I think like one of the main areas that we have sought to improve upon was the plot elements and the character development. And mm-hmm. I think Damien has outdone himself on that. And, and that's how we look at this. It's like, um, we, we think we improved on everything, but you know, that's us thinking that. And, but we're pretty freaking proud about what we pulled off. So even if it might not, if, you know, heaven forbid, but you know, if other people don't think it's as good as the first one, we're pretty freaking proud of it. So like, Hey, we, we did what we wanted to do. We yeah. put out the movie. We made the movie we wanted to make. We, we didn't have to sacrifice the integrity or anything like that. We did exactly what we set out to do. And so we're, we're excited for that. And so I, I think, I, I think we have surpassed the first film, but you know, it's up for the audience to, you know, that's always subjective anyway. You know, there, of course there are going to be some people that prefer the first film. That's always going to happen. It doesn't happen because it's the original. Probably they probably think that, but, but mm-hmm. that's the main thing that I try to do too. Like I never do things strictly for people. I, I try to do something that I like that I believe mm-hmm. in. And I try to find people that believe in what my mentality is towards it. Cause I find yeah. if, if Damien were to just listen to people and make a movie that just people want, it wouldn't necessarily yeah. do that well because at the end of the day, it's it's like you just said, people are gonna like the first one better, second. Yeah. Everyone has all these different opinions. So I find exactly. if you do what you love and you and you 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 yeah, you you stay true to yourself, you know, I, I think that's what makes the best um it makes for the best outcome. I, I agree. And that's where you know I think Damien's just fine in that area because Damien is a huge horror fan himself. So he's made the type of movie he wants to see. 
Absolutely. He's made scenes that make him nauseous. And it, <laughs> so I'm like, if it's just making him nauseous, I can only imagine what's going to do to other people. Yeah. So that, but that's, that's the thing. He wants to push the envelope. He doesn't want to play it safe at all in this movie. That's good. Like, Pushing the boundaries and stuff. Yeah. It's all about taking risks. That's a, that's a big thing. And that kind of ties into my next question too. So, well, first day I was going to mention that for horror movies, the reason why I'm so impressed by you and like getting into this genre, because it is, it is the hardest to do well in because it's so easy to make a horror movie look cheesy or not that good, especially because right. you're dealing with special effects, prosthetics, you're dealing with, you have to make people scared. You know, I find it's a comedy. I think comedy and horror, in my opinion, are the hardest to do because you got to kind of make people scared. You got to, right. again, the prosthetics, it can look really cheesy. So a movie I always bring up to people when I talk about this, and again, not, not to shame the movie, but like, I just personally don't find it scary, is Leprechaun. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, Warwick Davis, I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name correctly, but great yeah. actor, great actor. He did a great job in the movie. He was, he was witty. He was funny. But it just the movie, what they didn't do for me, it was scary. It wasn't scary, right? And Correct. And a lot of people they kind of knock that movie. They go, "Oh, it's not, it's not scary. It's cheesy. It's corny. This, that, right?" So I guess you getting into this genre of film, it was a big risk for you, right? You were kind of, in a sense, oh, yeah. pushing boundaries for yourself, getting to something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I had never done horror before, so I was like, okay, I hope this is scary to people. And, and I was, I you know, going into this, I was really worried about what the fans would think because I wasn't the first person to play art. You know, mm. they, there was already someone that had played them before me, Mike Gianelli. Uh, yeah, I saw. Yeah, I saw. I I didn't know that because you guys kind of looked. I mean, kind of the makeup, but like you guys kind of looked mm-hmm. the same. I saw all Hollow Z, whatever, right? And I was like, wait, that doesn't that doesn't look like him really. A little bit. And I looked into the description, and it wasn't it wasn't you. I was like, wow. Right. Right. And that, that's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, he's the original art and I, I know how I am as a fanboy. When someone new comes in and plays a, a beloved character, I'm very critical. Uh, I, I could, oh boy, you, you should, anytime they recast Joker, I'm just like, okay, who, who's, who's playing Joker? Okay, what are they going to do this? What are, how are they going to bastardize this? So I, I know how I am. <laughs> and so I know how other fanboys might be. So I was... I was so paranoid filming the first films. Like, oh my God, I hope people like what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Trust me. I know it's like, it, it's no, trust me. It's night and day props to the other guy. He's great. But you just, I think what you did was, and there's a reason why you're still working with Damien now for part two mm-hmm. and who knows how many other movies after that. Right. So yeah, you definitely, you've definitely uh, landed the role and you've done a great job at it, but, but, but going, going back, going back to Joker. Sorry. I wanted to get, I wanted to actually ask about that. Who is your favorite Joker? I'm curious. Well, I, uh, all around Joker, I would say it would be Mark Hamill by far. I mean, oh, he's really? the, the king. When it his comes voice, to his he, voice, I think. Yeah. It's just his voice. He understands the character. It's just not the sound of his voice. He understands how to deliver the lines as the character. He understands that mentality, the, the ego behind the character. And I, it, cause you know, Joker's not necessarily crazy. I, I kind of look at him as he's on a different level of sanity. He's like basically super sane. So he, yeah. he sees the joke that the world is and he, he sees how dark it is and that's why he's like yeah this is he doesn't take it seriously he's like this is all a freaking joke everything every oh, he's like good, says in the, the killing good. joke yeah. yeah is everything anybody's ever cared or struggled for it's all one monstrous demented gag yeah that's a good way to look at it you know what's funny I, every, every time i ask somebody that question they never bring up mark hamill's name ever no yeah. it's always he's the best my my favorite personally it's and this is my order i think it's heath uh it's tough. I, I like Heath Ledger the mm-hmm. best, but I also think I like Jack Nicholson's. The I like Jack. I, I like all three. You know, Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, even um, Jared Leto. I don't know. Like I saw the new Justice. <laughs> League. I, I, I know. I saw the new Justice League trailer. He looks good in that one, but like the other one, Suicide Squad, wasn't my favorite. Yeah. So. I, I don't. I don't even like the look in the new Justice League. Tra- it just you looks like, like it? they're trying. They're trying so hard. Yeah, I know. Edgy, and I'm like, just let him be the comic. That's the thing. It's like I, I, I get annoyed with the like live action jokers. They're all trying to be different with them, trying to do something new. Just and stick with the like, thing. Yeah, stick with the what... stick with the content. That that's that's why the Marvel films work so well. That it, because yeah. they stick to the content. They stick to the how the characters look, how they act, everything. It's like just stick. 
you don't have to be crazy in something. Ooh, we're trying to be edgy with this. Just stick to the material. Yeah, like, you're right. That's why. That's why the character's been so beloved for like over eighty, you know, about eighty years now. It's because of that. It just stick to that. And I think you know, one of the ones that the the jokers that people forget about is Caesar Romero. Yeah, the first guy with his with his mustache. Yeah. You can see with the he paint. He was man. great, but I mean, he was he was probably the most of all the live action jokers. He was the most comic accurate, especially to the comics at that time. I think I think Jack Nicholson more. I I, I think a little Jack bit. was he was yeah, but see, also it's like everybody else, you know, Romero and Ledger, especially, you know, they lost themselves in the character. They they didn't sound like themselves. Yeah, they they did. Like Jack was he was great, but he was still Jack Nicholson. Yeah, that's and I love Jack, but he was still I'm Jack. Yeah, great. Yeah, imagine the yeah. Yeah, so it's like it's. I mean, he looked like the Joker from the comics. So that was like uh, he had that look, but it was just like. But there, there still is like well, it's Jack Nicholson playing the Joker. It wasn't like you know how you watch Heath Ledger, like you forget that's Heath Ledger performing there. Absolutely. You're but, like, oh wow, I'm totally buying into his performance. But his character in the movie wasn't necessarily like the Joker from the comic books. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it I don't know. It's so many mix of pains. Every time I ask somebody, it's always someone different. I, I get. Oh I get, yeah. Yeah, it's it's never gonna end, honestly. But no, I was, I was just curious. I wanted to see your opinion on that because everyone, yeah. it's it's with, with the new Joker and especially the the Joaquin Phoenix one. There's so many mm-hmm. different opinions, but. But, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but but going back to the horror stuff too. So I, I was gonna ask you, do you know the channel Dead Meat on YouTube? I uh, yes, I do. Yeah, he he reviews like horror movies, and he did Terrifier too, and he and yeah. even, he, even he said good things about it, and he has a really, really good channel. Yeah, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually interviewing him Tuesday on my show. Oh, that should be fun. Yeah. Tell him I say hi. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hundred percent I'm gonna bring you up. He's definitely gonna have great things to say about you, man. That's awesome. That's As awesome. <laughs> So um, I have one more question for you before we wrap it up, because so again, I going back to the beginning of the show, I mentioned that me and you were so alike, right? And I know that sounds crazy because yeah, we're, we are, we're different people, but I think we do have the same values in a lot of sense. We're both funny. We both get along and I, I feel like I could talk to you for hours, but I mean the show, if it was for hours, we'd be here all day because I could talk all day. Oh yeah. Oh, but, same here. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but yeah, but we'll keep, we'll do another episode, honestly, but of course. Um, if you can give a piece of advice for for the audience, whether it be acting or in life, what would you tell them? I would. It's the most valuable lesson I ever learned. Is um after my mom passed away from cancer when I was in college, because at the oh, time my, I was my condolences. Oh, thank you. That was, it was almost twenty years ago now. It was, it was nineteen years ago. I uh, like last like a week or so ago, but um mm-hmm. that she passed away. But it, it's the most valuable lesson I ever learned because at the time I had um gone into because I was in college when all this happened, and yeah. I, I I decided to try to be practical with my life. And instead of pursuing an acting career uh, or like a major in theater, I decided to like, well, I can support a family with a teaching degree. So I was studying to be a teacher. And the last conversation I had with my mom, right before she passed away, it's actually the last conversation she had with anybody because that's when her body shut down. was just like, she, she wanted to, you know, impart these, you know, her thoughts to me. And, and, and she's, she just flat out said, don't do what you think you have to do with your life. Do what you want to do with your life. Do what makes you happy. Yeah, that's awesome. And that was the most important lesson I learned. And, and it, it didn't sink in for about a year or so. And, and I was in my internship in the schools. And right before I went back from my internship, I, uh, in a month's time, right before I went to school and right when I started my internship, my dog died. My grandmother died. The, the one that tried to exercise me. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> my uh, sister married a homeless man who is now in prison for molesting little girls. And one of my friends committed suicide. So I was like in a major downward spiral. And I, I was extremely depressed. I was just, I, I was just not there mentally. Yeah. And I was making mistakes left and right in the classroom that I had never made before. And I was like, what is wrong with me? And I was just so depressed. And I, I was doing story time with my children one day. And I was doing little voices for all the characters in the book. And they're all laughing and having fun. And I was having fun. I didn't want to stop, but we had to move on to math. Yeah. Like, oh, well. 
Uh, yeah. it's, always, it's always math that gets in the way. <laughs> oh, I know, stupid <laughs> math. But it was just like I had that epiphany there. I was like, man, I'm getting more fulfillment out of entertaining my students than teaching them. I, I think yeah. this is what I need to do. This is my calling in life. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I know it's a harder career path because, you know, there are a lot of uncertainties in it as opposed to, you know, being a male in education, that's basically a guaranteed job Yeah. anywhere. And, but I was like, you know, I, this is what I want to do. This is what's going to make me happy is entertaining people and making them laugh and smile and bringing joy to their lives. This is what I need to do. And that's mm-hmm. when, like my, what my mom said to me made perfect sense. I'm like, I see what she was talking about now and talk to my dad about it. And I expected him to be, Oh no, you need to stay in the teaching route because you know, it's, you can support a family, blah, blah, blah. And you yeah. Put that's money in your parents are like that. Yeah. Yeah. But my dad was like, Oh no, no, your mom and I always thought that you should have been an actor, but we didn't want to tell you what you had to do with your life. We wanted you to figure it out for figure yourself. yourself. That, that, yeah. That's so beautiful, man. Honestly, it makes me, that kind of makes me a little emotional when I hear stuff like that and in a yeah. good way, because that's exactly, again, man, that's exactly how I was too. I left, I left college. I, mm-hmm. I, I was going to school cause I have two older siblings and um, they both graduated honors at university. And I yeah. went to college for about a month because I thought that was the thing to do. I thought, okay, my siblings went, I have to go. But I never yeah. was like that. I was very like, kind of like you. I was like, again, the goofy kid. I, I like to entertain people, make people laugh and smile. Yeah. And I, I ended up quitting that and I became a barber. And I and that's when I fell in love with talking to people and cutting hair. Unfortunately, and I guess because when you're young, you figure this out, right? So Barbering wasn't my thing. I thought it was my passion, but my real passion was connecting with people. I love yeah. talking to people more than cutting hair. Cause I remember one time I was cutting someone's hair and then like, I ran so behind and I'm like, holy shit. And I kept running behind behind. <laughs> so then COVID happened. And this is going back to what I said about COVID kind of opening up doors. I, I quit barbering. I quit my job yeah. and I live, I live at home still, you know, knock on wood. So it's like my parents support me. I said, you know, I want to just do my own thing. I want to, I want to host a talk show. I want to pursue my dreams and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a, I have a, a day job. I do mortgages, but like I, my yeah. real passion is entertaining people, talk show acting. Like I love that stuff. So well, that's good. Yeah. And, and Dave, that's why I'm pursuing it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why like, honestly, I, I if this sounds, if this sounds weird, then call me crazy, but I consider you a friend and uh, honestly, yeah. it's nice to talk to you. I, I, and if you ever want to talk even outside the show, I'm, I'm more than happy to chat because it, it's great. To, it's great to hear stories like this, even like how your mom said that, you know, those words that again, like don't do what you think you have to do, do what you want to do because yeah. That's how people get miserable doing jobs. People, you have one life yeah. to live, man. One life, yeah, and, and yeah, and it might not just happen immediately. I mean, for me, I I waited tables for thirteen years before Terrifier took yeah. off, and, and, and but at the same time, all those years I was waiting tables, I was still pursuing what my passion was in life, and that's what you can do. You you can still have those your survival job, as I call of, it, of course. But still pursue what you want to do at the same time. Yeah, you got to fuel the passion with some sort of income too. Like, even yeah. for me, like this, a lot of the stuff I do costs a lot of money. Yeah. You know, cameras, computers, microphones, everything costs money, right? So you got to pay for it somehow. But the, the goal is that if this does take off, but the thing is, even if it doesn't, see, my main thing is that you, even if, you know, when you want to, even for acting, for example, right? If let's say I want to become an actor, right? If that's what I want to do. But even if it never took off, as long as I tried, because exactly. in life, you're not always, in life, you're not always gonna become what you want to do. Unfortunately, like, like even talk show, this may not even turn out to be nothing. I may do this, I may try so hard, I may amount to nothing. But the point is, at least I tried, and I can, li- and I can live with that. I don't care if I have to work a, a job I don't really like that much, even if I can tolerate. Exactly. It. It's like at least, at least I can tell myself, you know what? At least I have the mentality that when I want something, I'm gonna go get it. So who knows? Maybe down the road, another door open. And that's, then that's so true. Yeah, because I know so many people, especially in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama. I, I grew up around so many the people I learned from I, I, those actors. There were so many great actors in my hometown, but they were all so afraid of leaving Huntsville, Alabama, and actually trying to go out to New York or LA and trying to pursue it. And I think there was some some of those people they had just they became bitter in a lot of ways. There's like yeah. that bitterness there because they they weren't doing what they wanted to truly do with their life. They're too afraid to you know, like, yeah, just because, because they're afraid of failure. Yeah. Everyone's afraid. And, you, and it's like, well, you, you'll fail of course, every time that you don't try, but you know, yeah. the, if you go out there and try, yeah, you might fail, but at least you tried. 
that's but there's, yeah. you might succeed. You don't know. 